Hello, and welcome to our open online course for mathematics. This short course aims to help you build a knowledge and understanding of Einstein's summation convention and its applications. Let's jump straight into the first video, an introduction to summation convention. Before we delve into the theory, let's have a look at some of the definitions we need to know before we continue. Scalar. These are values that have only magnitude. Scalars are represented by a single real number. Sometimes, scalars are known quantities, such as 5, pi, or 42. But sometimes, they are unknown, and so they are represented by a symbol, such as lambda, or mu. Vector. These are values that have both a magnitude and a direction. A direction can be denoted in terms of dimensions, whether it be on a two-dimensional grid or in theoretical 5D space. For this course, we will only consider a 3D vector space with the standard basis of i, j, and k. This means that vectors will be represented as a triple of real numbers referring to the x, y, and z axes. Vectors can be written in many different ways, each of which is correct. We have a shorthand way of writing vectors, bold a or underlined a. Both are acceptable. There is also a coordinate way, which you should be familiar with in two dimensions. It is normally written like this, a1, a2, a3. a1 is for the x-axis, a2 represents the y-axis, and a3 is for the z-axis. A way that is useful on more advanced levels can be written like this, a1i plus a2j plus a3k. Here the vector's coefficients are a1, a2, and a3, the same as with the coordinates. The coefficients can be written as ai for i is equal to 1, 2, and 3, for convenience. This is important later. Here, we introduce you to another new and important term, the tensor. We describe an nth order tensor as a tensor with n indices. Each index represents a set of components. Take the example ai from above. Here we have a first order tensor where the index is i, because i can equal 1, 2, or 3. This first order tensor has three components. Now, consider a second order tensor. This represents a linear map between vectors. In more basic terms, it means we can transform any vector into any other vector by multiplying it by a tensor. This can be denoted by b i j. b is arbitrary and can be replaced with another letter. Notice our two indices, i and j. Because both indices, by convention, are three-dimensional, that is to say, i is equal to 1, 2, and 3, and j can be equal to 1, 2, and 3 as well, the tensor b i j has nine components. So why is this? Well, we can write all the possible values in a 3x3 three three matrix, like so. b11, b12, b13, b21, and so on. This is because there are three possible values for i, and three possible values for j. So this works out as 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. Similarly, we can write third order tensors like so. C, I, J, K. From what we have learnt, how many possible components are there for C, I, J, K? Well, since there are three possible values for I, J, and K, we have 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 27. So in general, for an nth order tensor, we have 3 times 3 times 3, and so on, n times over, or 3 to the n components. So, if we think about it this way, a tensor has different orders, with an order of 0 being a scalar, e.g. lambda, and a tensor of order 1 being a vector, such as pictured in the right-hand column here. A tensor with order 2 would then be a matrix, as we can see in the third column here. A tensor with order 3 would be some sort of hypermatrix. We wouldn't actually deal with this, but to give you an example of what it would look like, we've drawn one out here in the third column. That's almost all for this video, but before we finish, let's just recap what we've covered on the introductory episode. Can you define a scalar? Can you define a vector? Can you write vectors in different ways? What is the purpose of a tensor? Can you write down a tensor, identifying the index? Can you tell how many components there are for a given nth order tensor? If you're having any trouble answering any of these questions, don't be afraid to have another look over this video, or have a look at our course notes for the episode. 
We also encourage you to have a go at some of the questions related to this video so you can practice what you've learned. Good luck, and we hope to see you next time.